The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Ralph Bellamy in Soldier of the Cloth. <laughs> Before we begin our play, we take a moment to tell about a war item from the world of chemistry. With the greatly increased weight and high landing speeds of huge bombing planes, tires had to be made which would withstand the terrific impact of landing. Chemistry's answer was rayon cord. DuPont supplies Cordura rayon cord in important quantities. Tonight, the Cavalcade of America brings you a living, authentic page of American history based on the experiences of Lieutenant Thomas M. Reardon, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Our original radio play, Soldier of the Cloth, is by Milton Wayne and stars Ralph Bellamy as the Padre on The Cavalcade of America. Think back, please, to a morning almost a year ago the morning of August 7th, 1942. It was a quiet and memorable morning. It was on that morning in the West Pacific that the Marines swarmed over the climbing nets of the bulging transports and were borne swift straight to the beach of the Japanese-held island of Guadalcanal. Along with the fighting men and the packs and the guns was one man armed only in his faith. In the regimental boat rode the man who was the link between the fighting men and their homes, their families, their beloved, their country, their God. In the fourth wave of landing barges is the chaplain, Padre, to the men of all faiths. The ark is long and strange, eh, Padre? What brought that on, Doctor? That land ahead surging to meet us. It made me think of the strange circle that war draws in the lives of peaceful men. Thinking of me, Doctor? Yes, Padre. It interests me. The ark already drawn in your life from Jersey City across the world to a forsaken island in the Pacific. Jersey City might be a pretty good preparation for a jungle in the Pacific. <laughs> but I go where I'm needed. So do you. There'll be no church there in the jungle. No altar, no organ, no choir. And there'll be no skyscraper hospitals either. No operating theaters, no laboratories. But there will be bodies to mend and heal. That's my work. And for me, they'll be the souls of the men. Souls, Padre? Yes, Doctor. The souls and minds of men to comfort and heal. And God help us bodies to be buried in soil fallen and far from home. That's my work. We have much in common, Daniel. Yes, Tom. Much. Well, this is it. All right, men. Stand by for landing. <laughs> The sun rose and set, the earth spun, and along that nine by five miles of beachhead that had to be held, along that stretch of black stifling jungle and sand and water, men fell by day and by night. And the living sought the act, the word of comfort. Padre. Padre. Yes, who is it? Uh, Steve Dakin, Padre. Come in, Steve. Come on in. I've been looking for you. Said I'd find you in your tent. Sit down. Uh, no, no, thanks, Padre. I'm in a sort of a hurry. Then it must be near time for chow. <laughs> what can I do for you, Steve? Well, could you... Would you come with me, please, Padre? It's getting late. There are several things I have to do. Yeah, you see, we just now finished. I got here as soon as I could. Finished what? Oh, well, I can't say that, Padre. It's sort of a military secret. Oh, serious as all that, huh? Yeah, it's pretty important. Can you come with me now, please? How far do we have to go? Or is that a military secret, too? Well, it's only a couple of hundred yards, just inside the jungle. All right, stop jigging around. I'll be right with you. Oh, thanks, Padre. You're a persistent man, Steve. Yeah, yeah. I used to be a shoe salesman in the bargain basement. Attention. As you were, men. There it is, Padre. There, on your left. An altar in the jungle. Yeah, we uh, thought you should have one, Padre. We, all of us did it together. Yeah, didn't even know if it was right, but 
Flowers and palm leaves is all we could get. This big jumbo here picked the flowers on his way back from picking off a sniper. Say, take it. Huh? He just walked away like he didn't even hear us. He didn't miss nothing. Well, what's the matter? Don't he like it? Ain't you got eyes, stupid? Couldn't you see the words in his face? Hey, guys, quiet. The padre's kneeling down and praying. It was war, and the young men of peace were given arms and were taught to use them. But the mind and heart of man remember still the teachings of peace. In the midst of death and blood-drenched mud and sudden agony, the mind and heart remember and wonder and ask. My name is Michael King. Please sit down, Michael. Thanks. Look here, Padre, I... I didn't want to come here to speak to you. <laughs> that doesn't sound very flattering. Why? Well, I... I didn't mean it just that way. Forget it. The fact is you're here, and of your own will, shall we say. Okay, but let's get this straight first off. I'm not sucking around for a sympathy talk or a crying talk. Good enough. But there is something you want to speak out, something you want to listen to. Well, sure, but how... <laughs> I guess it sticks out all over me like barbershop cologne. I have learned to recognize the symptoms. Here, have a cigarette. My brand, too. Well, thanks, Padre. This is a seldom pleasure. I have a match. May I light yours? Thank you. Hmm. Southpaw, huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. Southpaw all the way. Maybe that's why I'm a little screwed up inside. Don't tell me you're a pitcher, too. <laughs> that would be the payoff. No, first baseman. A pretty good one, if I do say so. Ever try to make anything of it? Oh, I used to have a kid's dream about it, but it didn't pan out. I had a family to help out since I was 15. Well, shake hands with another ex-dreamer of the big leagues. Well, you're pretty busy, so I guess I better get on with my spiel. I'm listening, Michael. Look, Padre, I haven't been in any real action yet, but I'm due for it. Maybe a matter of hours and I'll be in it. Are you afraid, Michael? No, I'm not. At least not in the way people use that word. Say it in your own way. Well, I... It's a funny kind of being afraid. Something that could only happen to a southpaw. Or to any honest living man. Maybe. But here it is. When the bunch I'm with does meet up with the Japs, well, I... I keep thinking I'm going to muff it when it comes to shooting them down. Are you afraid for yourself or what might happen to you? No, Padre, nothing like that. And it's just the thought of shooting the enemy. Look, Padre, it comes out that way, but I'm not a jerk. I know why I'm wearing this uniform. I know what I was trained for. I... Oh, what's the matter with me anyway? Take it easy, boy. Perhaps the answer lies in looking beyond yourself. Looking at what? Well, start right outside this tent. Think a minute and you'll realize you're part of a team. For you, it begins right here with your own platoon. And it stretches from this piece of island across and out over the world until it includes every being that's standing up against the flame of aggression. I never saw it that way before. Begin to see it now. I blew myself up pretty big. But I guess I'm just small potatoes in this line. Huh? Maybe small, but important. Remember this, Michael. Whatever you do or don't do won't win or lose this war. But right here and now, you and what you do means everything to every man on this island. There goes the warning, and here they come again to claim the earth. They'll never have the price. You better take cover, Padre. They're waiting for me out there. Good luck, Michael. Thanks. I say, Padre, I want to tell you, just in case, I'm glad I came over here today. This was war without calendar, without season, without intermission. There was no day, no night. The Japanese planes came over around the clock. The men took to the foxholes by night. And in the quiet moments, there was talk of other days and places. And at the end of talk, there was maybe sleep. Should have let me bring my guitar along. 
Good for what they call morale. Sure, Dakin. Good for the Jap morale. Well, you never even heard me play. Hey, Casey. What's tonight? You mean, what day's tonight? Yeah, what day? Thursday. Yeah, that's what I figured, because I got a strange itching. You know why? Yeah, hey, you're fox happy, kid. You got that foxhole rash. Ah. Uh, I used to take my girl to the movies every Thursday night regular for three years almost. Makes me feel pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Tagging around three years after one chick is enough to make anybody feel bad. <laughs> if you ever saw my girl, you'd know that ain't funny. Uh, what are you worrying about, Frank? Afraid she's stepping out with somebody else? Oh, well, not for a minute, but... Well, one time she told me she could never enjoy a picture again if she had to go without me. I always remember that. Here comes Louis the Louse. They cut their motors. They sneaked over on us. Where's the AA? It's too dark. They've got to see him first. Hang in there! Keep your tails now! Where is he? I'm the chaplain. This way, Padre. Back here. They got him bad. Watch those holes, Padre. Gangway, you guys. Gangway. There he is, Padre. Where's that corpsman? He's dead. Probably instantaneous. Poor kid. Ego te absolvo ab omnibus censuris et peccatis. In nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. He was just before telling us. This used to be his regular night to take his girl to the movies. The armed men left lives of peace to study war. Textbook and lesson could teach only so much and no more. It was only in crouching behind a gun against the enemy... Only through living with the smell and sounds of death that each man learned war in his own way. Padre. Oh, Padre. Yes, what is it? I beg your pardon. I'm Michael King. Sure, I remember you. Hello, Southpaw. I'm the guy. Uh, may I speak with you? I have a call to make at the hospital. Come along. Thanks. I wanted to be there when you buried Frank this morning. He was your friend? He came from the same hometown. Both of us born and raised there. Padre, I... No, it's not really possible, but maybe today I made up a little for Frank. You saw action? My initiation. It wasn't very pretty to see. Japs hit us hard and fast. It was close and bloody there for a while, but we finally mopped up all but a couple of them. I picked off a few myself. I'm thankful you came through. Very thankful. Not a scratch. All the way out this morning, I, I kept thinking about Frank getting it from the Japs last night. But the minute we met up with them, and they let go the first shot, one thing kept banging away in my head with the noise of my gun. It's them or me. It's them or me. You know, Padre, you sure called them right on me the other day. Perhaps I should have been an umpire. Uh, not for me. I'm glad you're here the way you are. Thanks, Michael. This is a tough school we're going through. There's much we can learn from each other. Even from the enemy, Padre? Mm. Yes, even that's possible. If we're careful what we learn. Well, from them I found out something about myself in the USA. In that case, you've done better than a good many of our people. Maybe I'm sticking my neck out again, but here's what I feel. Those Japs are plenty tough. But they seem to want to die. To commit suicide for the emperor. <laughs> to me, that don't make sense. Well, Southpaw, what does make sense to you? I might be wrong all the way, but... I figure I'm worth more to the U.S. right up on my two feet. If it has to be, I'll die for it. But it's a sweeter taste inside to live for my country. You are listening to Ralph Bellamy as the Padre in Soldier of the Cloth on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. The war that knew no day and night went on. 
night came to Guadalcanal and covered over the day's toll of death and blood and pain. Night came and brought rest to the birds in the trees, to the beasts in their holes in the ground. But to the embattled men, night was a harsh and fitful interview. <laughs> There's something I can do for you. Who, who are you? Chaplain Reardon. No, sir. There's nothing you can do, Patrick. Thanks. What's your name? Davis, sir. Chris Davis. Let they go again. Again, again. Why don't they stop sometime? Our reinforcements. Where are they, Patrick? He said we'd get reinforcements. Chris, <laughs> when did you sleep last? This is my third night in the foxhole. Why don't they let us sleep, Patrick? Why? You have good cover here. The barrage is slackening. Try to sleep now. I, I can't. I'm afraid to go to sleep. I'll stay by you. Funny. My mother used to say that to me when I was a kid. I used to wake at night frightened. She'd make me stop crying and she'd say, I'll stay by you. She'd read a poem to me and I'd fall asleep again. It was a long time ago. I'm going on 19, but I still remember. <laughs> Funny, I still remember that. Padre. Yes, Chris? Do, do you know any poetry? There are a couple I still remember. Would you... Would you say one for me, please? Yes, Chris. I'll say one. Upon his will, he binds a radiant chain. For freedom's sake, he is no longer free. It is his task, the slave of liberty, with his own blood to wipe away a stain. That pain may cease... He yields his flesh to pain. No flags are fair if freedom's flag be furled. Who fights for freedom goes with joyful tread to meet the fires of hell against him hurled. And has for captain him whose thorn-wreathed head smiles from the cross upon a conquered world. Lord, Lord, let there be rest this night. Hint? As you were. What can I do for you, men? With a volunteer burial detail for Larry Scott, sir. We were right with him when he got it. That's why we've come to ask you a favor. What is it? This American flag. I'd like to wrap his body in it. I appreciate your feelings, but it's against regulations. Excuse me, Padre, but that's the flag that Larry died for. It's the flag all our men die for. But this here one, Padre, this one's special. I, I don't, I don't quite... Padre, is there something wrong? Something we can get you? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's all right, man. Probably too much sun. Uh, go on with what you were saying. Yes, sir. Well, we were on reconnaissance when we stumbled over nested Japs. One came down on Larry out of a tree. They went at it hand to hand. Larry had to use the knife to finish him off. And that Jap had two of our flags under his shirt. Two of them? Yes, sir. They took them from our landing boats. I recognized him. Larry took those flags. On our way in, a sniper got him in the back. That makes it pretty special, doesn't it, Padre? Yes. You have both flags? Here's the other one, sir. Then I have a suggestion. Yes, Padre. You men, let me have one of those flags to, to carry back to the command post, and, and you have my permission to bury Scott in the other. Thanks a lot, Padre. That's a deal. Please... Please call Dr. Paul. Padre, grab him. Hey, give me a hand. Get him on that cot. Gee, he's out cold. He was looking awful tired there. Well, what are we waiting for? Get the doctor. Come on, get the doctor. Stop worrying, Doc. I'm all right now. Maybe, Tom. But you can't go on this way much longer. You've been giving of yourself too much. Not to change the subject, Dan, but... 
Who's that refugee from a barbershop quartet? Oh, that one? He's going to drive me crazy. What's wrong with him? He insists on singing all the wrong songs. Why don't you request a change of program? Well, I did, but it's my perverse luck. Those are the only songs he knows. They start me to thinking about the wife I had to leave after being married for only three months. About the life we had planned together, about... No, I shouldn't even think about it. You're young, Dan. You'll take up that life again. I wouldn't give odds on that. Why not? Because lately I've been having strong intimations of mortality. Probably a calcium deficiency, Doctor. No, I'm serious, Tom. So? What is this feeling? Well, I just can't set it in the right words, but it's a feeling that something's going to happen to me. When it does... I want it to be quick and clean. You're just overworked and tired. I've been both before. This is different. I want to ask a favor of you. Anything, Dan. We never discussed this before, but you know I'm a Jew. I know that. There's no Jewish chaplain on the island, but even if there were, I'd still like you to be there to say a last prayer over me. Doctor, I suspect you're raving a little. I say that about all prophets. But your license entitles you not only to the practice of medicine. Well, that's my secret vice, being a part-time amateur prophet. That sounds pretty close. Yes, they'll be calling for us soon. Well, I'll be the one that'll go. You're staying in bed, and those are orders. You're a hard man, Doctor. (laughs) Good. I'm glad you're impressed. Uh, About the prayer. Will you, Tom? Of course, Dan. Thanks. Well, I have to make the rounds. Take care of yourself, Tom. So long, Dan. Carmen! Ask the word for a Carmen. What's happening, Sergeant? It's up there on the ridge, Doctor. We've got to get through. We're trying to flank them now. Oh, what's holding us? Sniper in one of those trees, sir. Picked off five of our men. Did you get them out all right? Only four, sir. Well, where's the fifth man? He's up there against that big rock, sir. Hey, you can see him if you step over here. Uh, yes. We'll see him now. Guess he's pretty bad, sir. Those snipers have got Tommy guns. Well, that man must be brought down from there. Hey, doctor, wait. What is it, Sergeant? We got orders not to go out for that man. Well, we may be able to save him. He may be dead, sir. Sniper may be using him for a decoy. But you can't tell from here whether that man is dead or not, can you, Sergeant? No, sir, I can't. I'm going up there, Sergeant. But, Doctor... I'm doing this on my own. Good luck, sir. Hey, Lacey. Yes, sir? Set your gun up here and cover the doctor. And keep down. Okay. I'm set. Hmm. I hope he makes it. I won't give two bits for his chances. Shut up. a boy, Doc. She's almost there now. Maybe there ain't no sniper. Sure. Maybe there's a Santa Claus. Get here! He's made it! He's made it! Hey, Doc! Oh, no! I got him! That's one on you, sharpshooter. Hey, Sarge, where are you going? Stick to that gun! Pass the word for a Carmen! 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 <laughs> get started. Padre, please. The doctor said I was to keep you in bed. Will you help me, Carmen, or do I have to crawl? Well? Put your arm around me. I'll take you. Hurry. Come on. Hurry. Here, let me help you, Padre. All right, Doc. Where is he, Sergeant? He's right up there. I didn't move him at all. There's a Carmen with him. Is he? Is he still alive? Tell me. Yes, Padre. They, they got him bad, right across the chest. Hurry, please, hurry. All right. Yeah. Dan. Dan. I, I was right, Tom. Much better prophet than doctor. Bye, Tom. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye for now, friend. Ego sum resurrectio ad vita. 
Qui credit in me, et seam si mortuus fueret, vivet. Et omnis qui vivet et credit in me, non moriatur in eternum. Curia eleison, Christi eleison, Curia eleison, Pater noster. Thank you, Ralph Bellamy. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you have just heard was based on experiences of Lieutenant Thomas M. Reardon, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, who served with the Marines on Guadalcanal. And now, if you please, some interesting news from DuPont. Once upon a time, nobody knows how many tens of thousands of years ago, a man or a woman, nobody knows which found that fibers twisted into a cord were much stronger than the untwisted fibers alone. Twisting makes any cord stronger, but some kinds of cord are better than others. Since the dawn of our power age, with its high-speed transport, the modern world has made great use of cord tires. For a while, all the cords were cotton. Then, as speeds increased, a new factor came in, heat. A tire spinning over the road generates a great amount of heat. It was necessary to find a new cord that could stand it. DuPont's answer was Cordura Rayon. DuPont Cordura Rayon enables great bombing planes weighing many tons to land at tremendously high speeds on tires of twisted cord impregnated with rubber. Cordura makes superior airplane tires that can take the terrific sledgehammer blow of a heavy plane landing at high speed. Today, DuPont's Cordura Rayon plays an ever-increasing part in the war program. Every pound of it that DuPont can make is in demand. The War Production Board mentions the use of rayon in 16 separate rubber products. Cordura also goes, although the exact application is a secret, into airplane fuel cells that automatically heal themselves when they are punctured by an enemy bullet. And it's used along the same line in bullet-sealing hoses, oil and gasoline lines for fighter planes. Of course, it goes without saying that it's used in tires for the mechanized equipment of the armed forces, just as it's used for tires in peacetime. Cordura rayon today goes into the largest size combat tires. And there's another type of Cordura that is used in fragmentation bomb parachutes. The same type is also used in flare chutes, which enable our airmen to send bright magnesium lights floating down over their targets at night. These are only a few wartime uses of the Cordura rayon that will provide safer, stronger, better tires as one of DuPont's peacetime better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the Cavalcade of America will present The Schoolhouse at the Front, starring George Tobias in one of the most human, heartwarming comedy characterizations that has ever been Cavalcade's pleasure to present. Mr. Tobias will be starred as George Annis, a wrestler who had to wait to go to war before he found time to go to school. Don't forget, be with us next week when DuPont presents George Tobias in The Schoolhouse at the Front, a new comedy for radio by Frank Gabrielson. The orchestra tonight was under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program has come to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.